Assalamu alaikum dear student. I am Dr. Parvez Ahmed. Uh, in this lecture, uh, we will talk about uh, thermal luminescence uh, decimeters. Uh, that is shortly we write uh, TLD. Uh, what is the mechanism of this kind of uh, detectors uh, that we call thermal luminescence uh, detectors? So the mechanism of thermal luminescence uh, detector is uh, that it is based on the emission of light from a crystalline heating. I mean the main mechanism of the thermal luminescence detector is uh, we expose the, uh, the detectors to the radiations. I mean and observe the radiation and then we uh, uh, this kind of radiations uh, uh, is exposed to heating. I mean when, uh, when we start heating this, this kind of uh, radiation detector so uh, it start emitting light so after removals of the excitations uh, uh, so that is uh, ionizing radiation i mean the sample process of thermal luminescence detector is uh, the emission of light from a crystals and heatings after removals of excitations that is uh, ionizing radiations so what we have uh, radiation dose causes the electrons and the crystal to move from low energy state to high energy state. I mean, it's, it's a very common phenomena in uh, almost all the kids who are studying physics. Uh, I mean, it's uh, well known from this kind of fact. So what happens? Uh, some of these excited electrons are trapped in the uh, metal stable states. So what happened then? These uh, photons can be collected with the photomultiplier tubes. So by proper calibration, the dose delivered to the crystal can be measured. I mean, these are the few steps uh, which uh, on the next slide we can also, I mean, so trying to explain you uh, with a sample procedure just like you can see it here. We have the ionizing radiations. Uh, the ionizing radiation is uh, made to uh, come inside the detectors. That is the thermal luminescence detectors. As you mentioned on the previous slide, uh, just like here we say that, uh, the main mechanism is uh, the emission of light from a crystals on a heating after removals of uh, excitations. So what I mean here, and we say that radiation dose causes the electron and the crystal to move from low energy state to high energy state. I mean that we are hearing we have the ionizing radiations and this ionizing radiation causes the electron to jump from lower energy state to higher energy state. I mean this is the first point uh, we are explaining here that ionizing radiations come inside and they uh, excited the electron from low energy state to high energy state. So what happened in the next state? Uh, some of these excited electrons are trapped in the metastable state. So just like you can see it here, uh, I mean here we have the electron from this particular point. It jumped from this state, uh, this is the low energy state that we call the valence band. It's the high energy state is called the conduction band. So in first state, we say the electron jump from the low energy state to the high energy state. And the second point, we say that some of the electrons, they are trapped in the metastable state. This is the metastable state in between the conductions and the valence band. So some of the electrons, they are being trapped in this metastable state. So what's happened then? Uh, these photons can be collected with the photomultiplier tubes uh, so we can say that uh, uh, what's happening in the next process that is uh, when we providing the heat I mean we have the detector in this particular state uh, some of the electrons jump to a higher state and some are being trapped in the metastable state so why, uh, what we do next uh, we start heating this particular uh, process the particular mechanism in applying the heat uh, including in the mechanism of the thermal luminescent detectors uh, when the process has been heated uh, so what it causes it causes the light to emit I mean the light is emitting from this uh, particular uh, radiation has been observed uh, so that has been calibrated so uh, what we have from this uh, when it's been heated 
So it's emitting the proton and those proton they are being uh, collected. Uh, and uh, what it mean by the collection of the protons? So by a proper collection of the proton uh, is being calibrated uh, on, a, on a screen or, or, uh, or some others uh, just like uh, we will have on the next screen. Uh, and that that that, uh, uh, that will be properly calibrated uh, with respect to the supply energy, uh, just like you can hear it uh, here. That uh, in the first process we have uh, thermoluminescent uh, materials, and the uh, thermoluminescent materials, uh, when the radiation is being fall on this particular material, uh, uh, when we start heating these materials, I mean th this is is it's just a top of the thermoluminescent materials. Uh, so what we have when the radiation come and fall on this particular material and we start heating this filament so what actually happened it emitted the light it emitted the light and this light is being made to fall on a portal multiplier tube after which is being focused uh, on a uh, what's called in a signal detectors i mean we have a circuit an electronic circuit uh, uh, which give us a signal that uh, uh, that is the detections uh, the detection has been happened so what we have it here uh, I mean it's, uh, it's the uh, multiplier uh, multiple trips uh, phenomena uh, uh, that has been uh, shown here with the help of this diagram and here we have for the uh, what's called I mean it's the typical uh, diagrams uh, here we have that how much signal intensity we have uh, with a particular temperature that is we have plotted the intensity that the signal intensity versus the uh, temperature I mean here you can see that uh, when we start uh, heating the material so at particular level we have no signals but uh, with the heating process you can see that uh, we have increased in the signal intensity I mean so you see that the first we have here the maximum one and it decreases to a particular point again we have the maximum again decreasing in the third stage again maximum so and so on we have uh, you can see here the fourth and fifth uh, we have uh, here the maximum signals uh, and then again it's decreasing and again we have uh, here is the maximum point and this is how we calibrated the TL, uh, TLD glow curves uh, I mean when you when you will proceed to the higher level so uh, you will have the research project so you will further learn about this kind of the calibrations uh, I mean this kind of the research from the TLD uh, locals uh, where you have to have a demonstrations or you have to write a report on these kind of curves uh, so what what's the advantages of the TLDs detectors uh, so we said that uh, it has the advantages uh, because of its small size, I mean, one can easily carry this from one place to other place. I mean, some sort of the portable device. And then it has a higher, uh, high sensitivity. Uh, I mean, it's uh, uh, good for getting the high sensitivity of the radiations. I mean, integration is good. I mean, samples, uh, it's like tissue equivalents. Uh, along with the advantages, I also have some uh, the disadvantages. The main disadvantages uh, uh, included uh, is a time consuming. I mean, it's taking too much time to give us a plot. Uh, and uh, one more advantage is that it's, uh, no permanent record. I mean, it's the result that we got from uh, thermal luminescence detectors, I mean, it has no permanent record. So it's been counted as, uh, as a main advantage of this kind of detectors. Otherwise, it's, it's good, small. A high sensitivity easily uh, can easily be integrated. Uh, it's, uh, good have uh, less like tissue equivalents, but uh, the main disadvantage is uh, 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 it has I uh, mean taking too much time for uh, getting uh, I mean to get the results from this kind of detectors, and the results uh, are the records. Uh, I mean it's, it's not permanent. It can easily be I mean vanished from uh, after some time. So uh, this is, I think, for this is all for this kind of the detectors. Uh, next time we will come for uh, another type of detectors.